Hey, y'all. Welcome to Journey with Jill Part 2. I know it's been a while. You've been hanging on the edge of your seat since we showed you the options that Jill had to look at for her new logo. Um, it's been a process, huh, Jill? It has been. It's been fun, though. Yeah. yeah so tell me, I know you had family to look at it, right? Like it wasn't just a Jill's decision. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so I actually had my husband, my daughter, and my brother all um, kind of weigh in. Um, my brother didn't really get to see a whole lot. He just kind of told me a few things and I'm like, yep, we're covered. We're good. Uh, my husband and my daughter both were just like me. We all went to the same one with this tweak. And so poor Molly wow. had to put up with us sending it. Can you do this? Can you do that? <laughs> so you I know what? That, that's what it goes. And I have to say, Jill, for my concern, and I think anybody who does any kind of job for somebody else, right? If you're creating something for somebody else, whether it's a wedding or a, you know, a logo, it, the more cooks you get in the kitchen, the harder that decision is. But with your family, it wasn't like that at all. I thought, oh boy, this could take forever. Mm -hmm. But you only came back a couple of times and it was very minimal things that yep. you wanted switched. So, and, yep. They had, they were, like I said, they, they liked, Everybody was unanimous on the picture. That didn't have a problem. It was just the font and a little bit of placement. And that was it. That they had no, it was pretty much cut and dry. And I didn't, I didn't sway them at all. I just laid them out and I didn't say, well, I like this one. You know, I didn't say anything. I just said, here they are. And it was, it was unanimous. So good job. I love it. Well, I have to say too, you picked the one I love the best also. So I was excited. I was like, oh, good, because that was my favorite. <laughs> I love it because it <laughs> highlights the truck, but it's still clean and crisp, but it gives that antique, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I just, it's very clean and crisp. Right. So I'm going to share my screen, y'all, and show you, and I'm going to tell you this too. I'm going to show you the one that Jill picked, and I'm going to show you the first way it was given to her, and I'm going to show you the second way with the tweak of curving the font that she wanted. When I sent her her final the other day, I sent both ways. I'm sure you noticed that when you opened it. Mm -hmm. Just in case, because I understand and knew there's something about the particular font that does not arch symmetrically over the truck. There's no way, there's just no way to make it happen. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give her both and give them in all formats because that way, if you find you like the look of it better on something else, it's okay. You're going to have them both. And they're yeah. close enough that it's not going to mess with your brand if you use one in something and one in the other. So let me show y'all. Let's see if I can find. All right, I'm going to start with this. Okay. Here are Here is the final image. And... I understood what she was saying about wanting it to curve over. It feels just more cohesive. But if you notice the way, you know, rusted is just a longer word than truck. And with the capital, the lowercase, the way that the font is, there was just no natural even curve. But I still think it looks great the way it is. But I thought I'd cover all your bases and give you both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, de it's definitely... Definitely cleaner straight. I still like the curve, but it yep. is it is a cleaner font straight. So. Yeah. All right. Well, there it is. Everybody gets to see it. I can't wait to hear feedback from people. I'd love to know. I would love to know who chose what. I heard a lot of chatter over the time of favorites and this, that, and the other. So it'll be interesting to hear what people think. But I love it. And again, I love, I'm just in love with the whole journey of the truck. I just think that is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I just love everything about it. And hoping that one day it does get restored because that would be a, a neat journey in and of itself. So, yeah. um, so I want to show you the other thing that I put together that I'm going to send your way. And um, it's a brand board. So I took a few minutes to create a brand board for Jill for her business. Now that we've got the logo, the font, all of her main things, I wanted to put this together for her. 
You might be asking brand board, what is that? Um, it can also be called a brand style guide. It has a couple of different names, but what it is, is a visual reference for your brand so that people identify your brand. It provides a summary of the look and the feel of your brand. So it will have um, all the different parts that we have used to put your brand kit together in one place that's shareable with others. So it will include your logo, your color palette, um, fonts. So you'll have a main font and then you'll have a secondary font and usually a third um, and some other imagery that you may use. So there are several things that you put on there and that just helps keep that consistency for your brand, especially if you have people working with you or for you that are creating things, then they will have that as a reference. So I want you to take a look at the two brand boards I put together for Jill. And at the end, we will share her final choice of everything for her brand and her brand board. Enjoy. Well branded. So I am going to share that with you now. And I have two and we're going to look at them and you're going to tell me which one you like better. Um, okay. Complementary colors to this was, they were a different complementary color than I expected when you do them. I love doing complementary colors. All right, here's the first one. Okay. So what I'm going to show you is that's your main up top, your main logo. Mm -hmm. Um, your main font, which is called March Rough, and it's in the retro series of fonts, which is what led me to that from the get-go as I was looking through all the retro, and I liked that it had that kind of weathered look, aged look. So that was where that came from. So below that are a couple of just variations of things you could use. So we would take out um, where you see it says submark variations above the black and white to the right there. Um, that will go away. That's just there right now. But when I send you your real one, it'll be, that'll be gone. But what these will be are other ways, like if you want to make a t-shirt that was um, like a monotone t-shirt, that one to the left gives you the colors that would give you a monotone look. I just threw a tagline under there. I don't know if you have a tagline for your business, if you want a tagline for your business. I... This was late at night, so don't laugh at my tagline. We can put whatever you want there. Or have no can't even see what it says. <laughs> it says keeping history alive is what I put on there. But um, that was just something to fill the space. So um, these are things you may never do anything with. But sometimes it's nice to have complimentary um, things that you can play around with as you grow and maybe you get into a line of swag or other things that you give out over time. If you grow into like your boutique idea and things like that, it just gives you other takes on it that you can use for different things. Um, this one, there's your color palette, as you see. So you've got a couple of um, complementary colors. I mean, a couple of monotone colors, the different colors of the main there, lighter and different shades. And then I always black. I think black needs, everybody needs black. And this one doesn't have white. To me, those are basic. Like, put those anywhere, anytime. <laughs> um, but sure. your, complimentary, your complimentary color is this blue. When you put it in charts and you look at the complimentary color for That's your cool. main color. Yeah. It's that blue. So I put it on there. I put it around it. Again, you may never use it. Right. And, and, but at least you know what it is. Yeah. And it's there if you decide to go forward and use it in something. Um, when I send this to you, the final stage, it will actually have the color codes on it so that you can just copy and paste and put them into design programs like Canva and it'll pull that exact color up. So, and I can actually teach you later if you want how to create your brand kit in Canva. So all of this is already preset in there and it's there for you just to pop up whenever you're creating something. That'd be awesome. Okay. <clears throat> so main font, and there's usually a secondary font. Sometimes there's even a third font. That's something you can develop over time. That's up to you. Um, 
but usually you have that secondary font for things like your tagline or anything that you put in the body of something. Um, I have two. So this was the first one I chose, which was Serana. And I know you're having a hard time seeing it here, but it does underneath each, the main and the secondary. It will show you the, what the letters look like in all caps, lowercase, and then what the numbers look like in that font. Awesome. Okay. And then you have at the bottom your main logo and then another kind of secondary look at a different way to use some of those colors in a logo. All right. Am I overwhelming you yet? No, it's awesome. Okay. That's okay. like so much work. It just blows me away that you've done all this. Oh, I love it though, Jill. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. I'm going to show you the second one I came up with. And you, again, can tell me, oh, I like this one better or that one better. Um, this is something we could just put together. You can go ahead and use your logos and start creating things um, without me getting this to you. But this will give us, hold on, let's see, share screen. All right. Here's the other one I put together. So this utilizes that blue, as you see in the bottom right. Uh -huh. So that's what you'll see is different. Yes, and I totally didn't like the blue, but I don't mind it when you actually see it together. Yeah, once you see it. And that's how I was when it first came up. I was like, so it's Ooh. that or the other com The other complimentary was a green. And when I put the green in there, it was just too Christmassy. I just, Christmassy? yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was just too holiday like so um mm -hmm. of the two i made the executive decision for you and only presented you with the blue <laughs> that's good um, no, i agree for that reason. all right so the only thing different between this is that i utilized the blue so you could see what it would look like and then i changed your secondary font the libra baskerville has a little more curvature to it it's still considered more of a retro looking font, but it does have kind of a prettier edge to it. Yeah. So those are the two. And then Very as you cool. see in your color palette, I didn't use the lighter pink, it's a white. So the one color palette had three shades of your, your rusty red, like three different shades of it. Whereas this one has two and the white added to it. Yeah, I like the white. Tell me, I'm trying to think of how to say, like your overall thought, what your plans are, how you're going to utilize your logo, like what kind of things do you want to do with this in the future? So I've never been, <laughs> I've been spending <clears throat> a lot of time trying to figure out when you're selling used stuff online, does branding really matter? And I don't think I care if it matters. It matters to me mm -hmm. that it makes it feel like it's an actual business. You know what I'm saying? So I yeah. think for me, I'm going to use it wherever and everywhere I can, whether it's to just make a tote bag for my friend or shirts for my family or <laughs> make sure that everything I do has that. Because right. at some point in my life, I will quit my nine to five and I may want to take this to a bigger, bigger thing than it is now. And I figure I might as well start the branding process now, even sure. if it really is just for me and then have that, you know, by the time I do decide to do something with it, I would have an established brand that I could. Yeah. Um, and especially if we ever do the whole boutique side of things that we've talked about. That, that's when it becomes critical. So right. um, for what we're doing now, it may not seem like it's that important, but it just feels better to me. So sure. I'm going to use it everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere, anywhere, you know. Well, so. so I'm sure you've heard in our episodes before, we've always touted that, you know, the whole branding thing, I, I love it. It's my love. I mm -hmm. could do this every day, all day long. <laughs> But yeah. is it necessary to have a successful reselling business? Absolutely not. It's yeah. not. But if you down the road, like you're saying, want to build, what better way than to start that now? Have your identification exactly. out there. And like you're saying, slowly dribble it out to the community. Because what we know for sure, it's a fact, is the more that that is out there, the more trust people build in you as a business 
And the fact that you're taking your time and building that over time, when you do go to full time, I, it's going to be, I think, fantastic for you. Um, I always like to say that because I don't want to discourage people who don't find it important to have all that. You know, it's there are a lot of people that sell on eBay and make a good living and never have a social media and never go anywhere beyond that. Right. And they do well. But if you right. want any kind of community or relationships built with customers, that branding has everything to do with building that from a business card in your box when you ship it, you know, I think, have you've done thank you yep. cards? Yeah. Yeah. And I did a thank you card um, from the beginning because I, I asked, I poked the bear as everybody says not to do. And I asked for feedback. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if you're happy with us, you know, I also um, said you can find us here on Instagram and here on Facebook on my thank you card. And I have mm -hmm. quite a few followers on Facebook that I do nothing with. So yeah. I definitely need to to work that angle because you never know. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I mean, do have repeat buyers that have come back. So right. it's definitely worth it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and that's what Libby and I do with our business is we just sometimes print out a thank you card with a QR code um, on our Rolo printer. Like it's not even branded well, but it's quick print. Mm -hmm. We'll put a little handwritten note and put that in there. And it's literally on the same label that we print our shipping labels on. We don't change it. You've probably gotten one of ours in the mail, right? You've shopped us before. So. I actually have a couple of those from you guys. So yeah, so you see. <laughs> and I saved them. But then we'll also put a business yeah. card in there. And like you say, it builds, we have had repeat customers. We have had people reach out to us, myself personally and Libby in our different locations. So, oh, I didn't realize you were in the area. I've had people, because the number is Libby's number, call her and say, this item I received from Greensboro, I would love to see if they're, and then she'll text me, do you mind if I give your number out to this gentleman? Absolutely not. And I have had so many additional sales from putting that simple business card in there. So I think it's a great Good investment of, of your time now, like you're saying, to really have that set up for you for the time you do decide to go full time. Although you say part time and I, Jill, you're more full time in your reselling <laughs> business than than the majority of us. You you're amazing. <laughs> someday, someday it'll be my only thing to do, though. So <laughs> that will be a good time. Perfect. then. So, yeah. 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 Yes. No, it's, it's all good. <laughs> so, so I'm excited. And the other thing, yeah. Well, good, good. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. So just know that I am here to help you with anything moving forward. I will get these final, I will get the two that I just shared with you to you. Um, I have not done anything permanent with them yet so that you can look at the two secondary fonts um, and look at the color okay. palettes. Yeah, right. Okay. And I will just... <laughs> Yeah, I'll make that solid and then I'll send you your final. So you'll have that just to put on file and I'll put the coded colors on there for you. And then, like I said, in the future, if you want to get together on a Zoom call and I can help you get your brand kit set up or, um, you know, anything when yeah, it comes to developing. Me. You bought. I would love to. I, I Like I said, I sat down and tried to do something with Mr. Print and I was like, this is above my pay grade. I do not know how to run this stuff. <laughs> So yeah, I would love, and I've watched Samantha do Canva and it looks so easy. I just, I've not played with it at all. So I just need to do it. Yeah. Well, I think once you get it, once we get your brand kit set up, it'll make it even easier. It really will because all of your fonts, you won't have to change any of that. It'll just be clicking to, to set it up for you. So I am happy to do that with you and we can set up your brand kit, set up your business card, that kind of thing and get thank you cards. And that way you'll have, have them set and saved and be able to just pull them up whenever you need them. Very cool. All awesome. right. Well, this was fun. I'm so excited. Thanks for uh, yeah, trusting it, me. Well, and it was, it was so neat to see the process that, um, and the questions that you asked me and how it just, it, everything I said verbally, you were able to produce in awesome. physical form for me. And that was so awesome. It was, yeah. It, I couldn't have asked for a better, 
representation of what I asked for. So and oh, I good. asked for I'm some so pretty glad. good things. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Nothing making that happen that I couldn't even get you a decent picture and you made it into that logo is awesome. So, well, that's thank you very uh, much. You're welcome. I am so, I, I think I said it on one of the videos. It, I, I love what I do, but it's even a bigger blessing when you do it for a friend and it has an extra special family story tied to it. So story. yep, that makes it that much more um, meaningful to be able to be a part of that process for your family. So thanks for trusting me. All right, y'all. So I hope you enjoyed this part one and part two of Jill's journey. Leave comments, be nice in your comments. <laughs> At least be honest. Be know. honest. Yeah. It can't be, be nice. At least be honest. Be kindly honest. <laughs> um, and be looking yeah, for Bill's brand out and about because you never know where you might see it. Right? <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to cheer <laughs> sure. us out of here. I'm going to say until next time. You got a cup over there, Jill? We'll toast. I do. Cheers. I do. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for joining Libby, Molly, and Samantha, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we build a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. Find all the ways to connect with us on consignmentchats.com. Episodes are available on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcasts. In addition, join our free private Facebook community.